Hello guys and welcome to Steve Knows. It's time for that weekly update and it's been a fantastic week. And between you and me, a little birdie told me that next month is going to be just as amazing. So we have new hardware, game updates, new haptics and a Quest 2 giveaway down below. So enough chinwagging, let's get started. So I'm going to get the sad news out of the way. I am sorry to do this. It's breaking some dreams, but the Steam Deck, the portable Steam handheld console slash kind of whatever you want it to be, according to Valve, has got a new update and they have called this the Deck Verified System. This is basically a certification that says Valve approves this game for running on the Steam Deck. It'll give you a nice easy way to determine if the experience is going to run perfectly, if it's going to be playable, which may require some user adjustments, or it's just not happening. And in the video that they posted to tell us about this, it showed some VR games and it said that they are not supported, which I suppose it's not news, we already knew this. But the verified system is still kind of handy and that still doesn't mean the Steam Deck doesn't have some sort of relevance to the rumored Deckard headset that Valve are hopefully releasing as a wireless PC VR headset and I just cannot wait to hear more about that. And speaking of new headsets. Last week we had the Vive Flow. This week we've got Vario. Next week we've got Pimax and Oculus. It's pretty intense. But for now, let's talk about Vario. They are known for some pretty pricey headsets that are for enterprise, but they are offering leading technology in the VR space. You may have seen Thrill's video where he talked about the Vario headset that just blew up and he raved about it. He loved it. The company have decided to come out with a consumer headset now that is going to set you back $2,000 along with some small caveats. And at this price point, it's not going to be for the everyday virtual reality user, that's for sure, but for us, the enthusiasts or VR prosumers. So for that price tag, you are going to get dual mini LED displays, which is supposed to bring even darker blacks, brighter brights, better colors, and better contrast than traditional screens. But it has an insane resolution of 2880 by 2720 per I, it has a 90 hertz refresh rate, which I don't know why I'm always surprised at this point. It's just, you can get a 299 headset that offers 120, but it seems 90 is the default. I shouldn't be too upset. And I don't know the limitations of the display. I just don't know. It has 115 degree FOV and there is eye tracking with automatic IPD, which just makes me want to dance. Automatic IPD has been something I've wanted for such a long time, ever since learning about IPD, using PlayStation VR software adjustment, which is just ew. And on paper, if I ignore the price of this headset, the headset sounds like something I would have expected to be a next-gen headset last year. And some of the reviews I've read as well, it's been a mixed bag of opinions, but I am really glad to see that this company have entered into this space and offered us an upgraded PC VR headset. I just don't think that we have something cheaper that is going to surpass this from Valve and Oculus not too far down the road. But I'd love to get your initial thoughts on this one, or even better, if you've got to try one of these, what do you think of the device? And speaking of Oculus, I've been trying to order the story so they kind of flow, which leads me on to Vive Flow, I'm just kidding. This is an Oculus story, so Facebook, I know people don't like Facebook, but neither does Facebook, it seems. They are rebranding and want to change the company's name to something that reflects their effort in creating the metaverse. And I think this is nuts. I literally just said in my last news update that I believe that the Zuck is actually passionate about VR. Well, so much so he wants to change the name of his company to align to its new direction. Or I wonder, is it simply just trying to pull a fast one because the name Facebook doesn't have the best brand image. Also fun fact, did you know Google used to be called Backrub? <laughs> Honestly though, even if it's not shady, I do think it's a great idea because Facebook, they are Facebook, Instagram, Oculus, WhatsApp, Messenger, and they have even more businesses as well. But their business name is the name of the application he made over 16 years ago. It doesn't really reflect what the business is now. The Verge have said they expect an announcement next week or at Facebook Connect to reveal the new branding and name. So any guesses? Could it be Horizons? Could it be the Oasis? I don't know, maybe IOI, but that's already taken by a game studio already. Facebook have also announced that they have plans to hire 10,000 new employees across Europe to help facilitate the erection of the metaverse. <laughs> hmm. 
So a big push is coming because that is a lot of people. And if you need a job, maybe keep an eye out. It would be good to have some of you peeps on the inside. This next story is from Nova. They have started shipping the Sense Glove, which is a virtual reality haptic glove that looks like someone had just dismembered Robocop's hand. This glove is a wearable to help immerse you in VR by allowing you to feel resistance on certain objects when you're interacting with them and get feedback so you can feel different types of services. A pair of these gloves is going to cost you $5,000 worth. But if you do bulk buy because Christmas is around the corner, you can buy 10 of them and get a discount of only 3,500 per unit instead. Or if you have a group of friends, I suppose, VR enthusiasts, maybe you should make a group for anyone that's wanting to buy these gloves and then you can get a pretty decent discount. You can buy a Valve Index kit as well with that. The glove can provide resistance of up to two kilograms on all of your fingers, which is actually a hefty bit of resistance when enjoying your VR experience. The gloves, they do not have built-in trackers though for lighthouse house lighthouse housing just just lighthousing or inside out tracking but it does support attachments for your controllers and you can track that way or if you have the pico neo 2 it doesn't need the controllers it can just track straight from the headset which is uh i wonder how they're doing that you know, the gloves were demonstrated in a way that i considered or that i believed would be the best application for this kind of glove which is in the automotive or the construction industries being able to feel the tactile weight of pieces and the resistance of components would be most beneficial in training. And since to support the gloves, the developers would need to integrate the Nova SDK into their code base, it's likely Enterprise would be where you're going to find this sort of support because there's a lot of money in it. But I am very happy to see a successfully implemented haptic and resistant glove. Hopefully it's not too far off until we get a full suit. Just a quick note, because I saw something online about this, about Resident Evil, which I'm about to touch on in this video, but on a slightly different topic, is that the game was able to run on the Oculus Quest 1. Someone was able to sideload it onto their headset, onto the Quest 1, and it ran perfectly. So why is it? that it's not available for those users. I'm genuinely curious. Is it something to do with long periods of play could damage the components? Are certain parts of the game just too intense? Or are they deliberately just trying to push out the Quest 1 user base? I do not know. But amazing work to the guy that figured this out. So thank you for posting that on Reddit for us. So this has to be touched on. It's kind of blowing up and people are split on the issue of Resident Evil 4. It's been released, it's breaking records already apparently, but we don't have any solid numbers, but we can see the rapid growth based on the number of reviews that are being replaced on the game's page on the Oculus Store. And it's pretty impressive. But there has also been discussion around censorship of Resident Evil 4. The cheeky flirting that we had between Hunnigan and Leon has been removed, among some other things as well. Some of Ashley's content has also been removed, like her calling you a pervert when you're being a naughty boy. Stop, Leon! Oh, you pervert! And I understand why they did this. This game was made a long time ago, and today it's an extremely touchy topic when bringing up objectification. And it's the biggest VR release of the year for the Oculus Quest. Well, at least so far, there are some treats coming next month that I can't tell you about. Just, oh, oh, oh. And the game is for a new audience that may not have experienced Resident Evil before. So it was modernized, especially when it comes to virtual reality. It's so much stronger the way that it evokes emotion. But the diehard fans who enjoyed the game of plenty back in the day, the purists of the franchise are upset of the change as the game is not exactly as it was. And I'm on the fence as well because I am one of those purists. It's one of my favorite games, but I do understand why they did this. But what I do know for sure is that this should not sway you from experiencing such a great VR game. But let me know what you think about this down below because it's a... It's a topic, a hot topic of discussion right now. This was pretty great. I actually really like this. HP Reverb G2 has had an overhaul, an upgrade to what I'm gonna call the HP Reverb G2.1, which is kind of a mouthful. The headset has been updated with many of the requested features from consumers, updating the tracking system, AMD compatibility, and eye relief to help improve the FOV. So what they've done is they've taken the headset and improved the tracking. The vertical coverage has improved a crazy 30%, which fixes some blind spots that they had below the waist, which was a hardware change apparently, the company reported. So they may have just changed kind of the angle the camera was facing. The headset also now contains a removable spacer and a new facial insert to reduce the eye relief that was giving viewers tunnel vision and reducing the FOV inside the headset. 
Other improvements are compatibility with AMD hardware, which is a big chunk of the population. So your VR experience with this headset on that hardware should be much more reliable. Maybe the G2 is more appealing now. Not in the UK though, because these changes are only in the United States, unfortunately. But for the price point that they're offering this headset with these improvements, especially on the tracking, this could be a great PC VR headset for someone who's just starting out in this space. Hasbro have had their conference event and they've given us some more information and another teaser for a game called Transformers VR coming to Steam VR and PlayStation. It's like no way we can now become one of the Autobots. We saw seconds of the gameplay as well in their teaser trailer of a big old dino fight and Optimus Prime absolutely wrecking a Decepticon. However, the game did look like it was an on rail shooter, which hurt me deeply. I was very upset about that. Today is also a great day because we have an update for one of the best virtual reality games around, Blade and Sorcery. Today on the 24th, they are going to allow you to experience procedurally generated dungeons, including some traversal mechanics like swinging between lanterns. In the future, they do plan to add a currency which you gain from playing these dungeons, which can then be used to purchase weapons and abilities, but not on release. The trailer looks brilliant. It's like a completely new game. It's taken the amazing Blade and Sorcery physics and gameplay we love and turned it into an objective experience. This looks serious and I'm so, so excited. I know my friend TechJu is going to be pumped for this and I can't wait to see his gameplay. So guys, if you've not played Blade and Sorcery before because you were just thinking, oh, I'm not really into this kind of arena gameplay, check out some of the gameplay when it's uploaded after today where people have access. I think you are going to be very impressed. And now some fantastic news. Virtual Desktop has had an update, which it needed. Ever since the Oculus Link came out with the update for link sharpening, I could see a noticeable difference between Virtual Desktop and the Air Link, especially when reading text. It was harder to focus on, but I knew Godin would be all over it. He's so fantastic with these feature updates. So now Virtual Desktop has a new sharpening feature that is based on AMD's Contrast Adaptive Sharpening. This feature works on blurry areas only, not to waste resources on trying to sharpen things that are already in focus. And it really does make such a great difference, which can only be really seen inside of the headset, unfortunately. So you're gonna have to try this for yourself to notice the difference. And especially if you're enjoying a wireless experience and you've got tons of compression. So in the menu, you do have a scale to select the sharpening intensity, ranging from 0% to 100%. But I thought anything between 50 and 75 was just was just perfect. Godin does recommend 75% though. So now making Virtual Desktop my Steam VR go-to once again, and this is especially great news for cloud gaming because you would use the Virtual Desktop streamer to play those games and you're going to experience lots of compression so they can try and get all of that gameplay data as quickly as they possibly can to you. So that's it from me today, guys. Thank you for watching to the end of the video, getting caught up on the latest and greatest in the virtual reality space. Please consider subscribing to the channel. Such a small deed makes a world of difference to me, and hopefully I will see you next time. Happy gaming, guys. Good day.